Hi Booktube, it's Andrea and I'm here today with my eventual wrap up for January and February. As you were, I had my baby in January so I haven't been doing much reading. I read 10 books in January and I read, so I'm just trying to get the camera at the right height, um, two in February, that's how busy I've been. And in March I haven't finished one yet but I am working on it. So, oops, you are right sweetie? She's probably going to want feeding or changing in a minute. So we'll just quickly go through them because it's been such a long time since I read these anyway. So, the first one I read was Jack the Ripper in the East End by, with an introduction by Peter Atwood. This is a quick overview of what it was like to live in the East End during the time that Jack the Ripper had his reign of terror and uh, what came about afterwards and the changes that were made because of it. So it's actually really fascinating, but less about Jack the Ripper and more about the East End. I finally finished The Book Thief by Marcus Souza. I found this hard to get into to start with, but then in January when I actually sat down and started reading it, I was hooked within minutes and read it within two days. So that's how quickly I got through that one. You all know The Book Thief. Great book. Recommend it. Excuse me. Sorry about that. Just had to... Uh, Go and rescue the little one. Here she is. She's a bit uh, grumpy. I don't know whether she's tired or changing or feeding. She's not due a feed, so I think she's probably going to want changing in a bit. Yeah, she just wants a cuddle. Um, so after the book Thief, I read um, Agatha Christie's... Oh, this is going to be fun for the next few weeks. The Murder in the Vicarage, which is the very first of the... Miss Marple stories. Um, I love this edition. It's a reproduction of the Crime Club edition that came out originally. Um, so basically, there's been a murder in Vicarage, and who did it? It's Agatha Christie. You can't go wrong with Agatha Christie. I love Agatha Christie. Uh, then, of course, it was um, the first book in the Stephen King readathon that Binge Read is doing for 2018, which was Misery. I have never seen the film. I'm sure most of you have. I've never ever seen the film. I, I know who was in it and I know it's quite gruesome um, but I read the book about um, Paul Sheldon and the character that kidnapped him but thinks she's saving his life um, and I really 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 enjoyed it. Annie Wilkes is not a woman you want helping you in any way shape or form. So yeah, so that's um, Misery. I really enjoyed that one. I'm really enjoying the Stephen King readathon. So after that, I read one of the best books I've read in a very long time. It made me laugh and that's Life's a Drag by Janie Millman. And basically this tells the story of a small village in, where is it? In Suffolk, which holds a drag competition in fun every year and in America over in San Francisco there's a drag club which is in trouble so they sort of join forces together and some of the drag queens from San Francisco go over to Suffolk to help promote their drag competition and vice versa the the two some of the guys from Suffolk go over to San Francisco to help uh, with the drag club it's actually extremely very funny it's one of the funniest books I've read in a long time I laughed out loud at one point I was reading it quite late at night laughed out loud and my partner who hadn't come to bed yet was uh, <laughs> he came in saying are you all right I thought you were crying I went no I'm just laughing because this is the funniest thing I've read in a long time so definitely pick this one up if you can it's hysterical I loved this book I can't rate it I think I gave it five out of five because it was just so funny um, so that's Life's a Drag by uh, Janie Millman then I actually read Killing by Colours by Wally Lee, which is book three in the um, Cardiff Bay mystery series, but I don't know what I've actually done with the book. It is here somewhere. Um, it, it's just, uh, everything's everywhere at the moment. It's hard for me to find anything. It's hard for me to do anything. As you can see, as soon as I start trying to do something, little madam here kicks off and wants something done for her. Of course, she's got to take priority, so... The book is here somewhere. I will insert a picture of the cover up here somewhere. 
uh, so you can see the cover. So basically this is again um, Martin Phelps who's the DCI in Cardiff at the Bay. Um, this time he is receiving letters, colour coded letters, um, telling him that there's been or going to be a murder and he has to try and figure out um, who the killer is before they get to the blue envelope which of course it means boys in blue, the police and the, the guy is going to kill the, the DCI. So I love these books because obviously living near Cardiff, I know Cardiff, these are locations I actually know when they go on about it. So for me that's one of the interesting reasons but they're also really good stories and you know it's, it's, they're well worth, worth reading. So again pick them up if you can, they are so much fun. Uh, then I read Tuesday's Gone by Nikki French, so this is the second book in a Frieda Klein series, um, um, a psychotherapist um, helps the police investigate crimes uh, and officially, uh, basically in this one, a decomposing body turns up in the flat of a woman who is mentally ill. Um, so she thinks she's looking after him, but he's actually dead and been dead for a long time. They don't know who he is, where he's come from, and what his story is. So, but can they find out who he is and uh, solve what happened to him with Frieda Klein's help? And they do. And these are really good. I'm not actually sure why they're named after the days. Monday's Child made sense because it was about a child who went missing on a Monday, but Tuesday's gone, not really so much. Um, there's. Uh, She's gone up to Saturday. I, Saturday's the only one I don't have at the moment, so um, I will be reading another one of those fairly shortly. But they are enjoyable, Nikki French, which is a husband and wife duo. They're very good books, they're good writers, so it's always a good read. So after that one, it was oh, Katia Leaf's You Are Next. He's already chosen his next victim. Uh, this is about a killer and a woman, uh, a police officer named Karen, who was trying to catch a killer named the Domino Killer. Basically left dominoes behind, which gave clues to his next victims. For Karen, the problem was the next victim was her husband and daughter. Um, so she actually left the police force because of it. Um, the Domino Killer is in, was in prison, but he's escaped, and now he's coming after Karen. So can they find him? before he gets to her and kills her. So it's a good book. I really enjoyed this one. It's a quick read. I read this quite quickly, so I really, really enjoyed that one. Then, there seem to be all crime novels at the moment. The next one was Ruth Rendell, The Vault, which is one of the Wexford stories. Wexford has now retired, but he has a townhouse in London as well as his country cottage. Um, basically, uh, a body is found in the cellar floor of a house um, well actually three bodies are found in the cellar of a house and, and uh, they were placed there at different times. So can they solve these historical cold cases with Wexford's help? Um, Ruth Rendell, again, is always a good read. I really, really enjoyed them. Uh, yeah, they, they, a lot happens in this book. I mean, for a thin book, it's not a huge book. A lot happens with Wexford and his family as well as searching for the killer or killers because there are three bodies in this book. Very good. And the last book I read in January, oh, if I can get to it, was a children's book. And of course it, it was a book that came out last year for Christmas. And it's Terry Pratchett's Father Christmas's Fake Beards. So this is a collection of short ooh, children's stories with a Christmas uh, or holiday theme. Um, so obviously you've got Father Christmas's fake beard. So the real Father Christmas takes a job because one night a week is not, one night a year is not enough money. Um, but, uh, of course he hasn't got a fake beard, so they wonder why. Um, um, and there's all sorts of different things. So there's a very short ice age where they have a, a snowmageddon, much like we did last week. And in here, because these stories predate some of his um, Discworld stories. There's one story in there called The Computer Who... Let me just have a look see what it was called. The Computer Who Wrote to Father Christmas. Now anybody who has read the entire Discworld series, and in that case Hogfather, would know that um, in Hogfather there is a computer and senior university called Hex. And in Hogfather people stop believing in the Hogfather, Father Christmas. So they 
Ask Hex to believe in Father Christmas. The Death asks him to believe in Father Christmas or the Hogfather. So of course when he's Hex the computer says he believes in Father Christmas, he starts writing a Christmas list. Um, you know, to Santa, like everybody's or to the Hogfather. And um, Death does say, hang on, you can't do that. But he says, but I believe, and that's part of the arrangement, so he can write his Christmas list for the Hogfather. Mm -hmm. So you can see in some of these short stories the germination of ideas that he used later in his Discworld. So obviously the computer who wrote to Father Christmas became that short scene in Hogfather where Hex wrote to the Hogfather. So those were the books I read in January. Now like I said in February because I was dealing with the arrival of this little munchkin because she arrived on the 31st of January and I've been so busy getting used to not sleeping very much and you know, look at me that. Oh, good girl. And so on. I only did manage to read two books, which is an anomaly for me, or in Terry Pratchett world, An Abomination Unto Nuggin. Um, and those books were Patricia Cornwall's Blowfire. I actually started this in January, but only finished it in um, February. And of course, this is one of the Scarpetta novels. This is about somebody she's already put in prison, who escapes from prison, and yeah, it was... Now I know somebody who really loves the Scarpetta novels, and I do enjoy it, Patricia Cornwall, but with this one, I just felt it was a bit of a nothing book. It went on for ages, and there was it took me ages to finish it, and that's unusual for Patricia Cornwall. So I'm I'm not going to give up on it because I do like reading them, and maybe it's because I'm reading them out of sequence. Perhaps I should borrow them all in order, or offer my friend Anne Harrod eventually because she's got every single one of them. Um, yeah, and the second book I read. Ooh. The books are going everywhere now. Hang on, push them that way. Don't want them hitting my baby. You can hear squeaking in the corner. <laughs> she does make some funny noises. It's of course the Stephen King book for February, which was Blaze. Stephen King writing as Richard Bachman. Um, so Clayton Blaisdale is um, a small time criminal. Um, he meets another criminal called George Rackley and they come up with the um, I did steal the infant son of a prominent person and ask for a million dollars. Clayton Blaisdell is special needs because as a child his father threw him down the stairs three times and that damaged his brain so he's not good with people or situations or thinking very fast on his feet. However, George Rackley dies in a card game or after a card game um, he's killed and Blaze is left on his own and he decides that to kidnap this child follow the plan that they made and kidnap this baby whose name is Joe he successfully kidnaps the child he's got all the stuff he needs to look after a baby but of course the police and the feds are closing in on him what doesn't come into is that you are actually rooting for Clayton Blaisdell for Blaze because he's actually a nice guy even though he's the baddie. He's a baddie but he's got a heart of gold and if he hadn't have fallen in with George he probably would have been alright because when he gets hold of the baby the ghost of George is a voice in his head and you don't know whether it's actually the ghost of George because this is Stephen King or whether it's just his imagination is telling him Oh, you need to get this for the kids, you need to get this, you need to do this, you need to do that. And then it, it, in the end when it's getting, the heat's getting on, the, the voice is time to kill the child and get rid of the body. But he won't do that because he's fallen in love with this and he looks boy. after him and he's amazed by how wonderful this child is. And, you know, <laughs> the child redeems Clayton Blaisdell, he redeems Blaisdell, Blaise, in a way. But of course they're not going to listen to him and, and of course the feds do catch up with him in the end and obviously it's not good for him. But the baby's alright and he would never hurt the baby. He, In fact when the feds shoot at him and something, not the bullet but a piece of shrapnel or a piece of rock or a piece of branch cuts the child's cheek, he goes absolutely mad because they've hurt the baby and that's not what he wants. He wants to look after the baby, he loves the baby. It is a really sad story and I really, really enjoyed it and it's totally different from Stephen King than you would normally think of. So definitely worth reading. So those are what I read in January and February. I am currently reading um, an ARC that I received last week 
and of course I then once that's de dealt with I will be ploughing on with the next Stephen King book which is the Dolores Claiborne um, I'm hoping to read more I'm starting to read a bit more now I'm starting to get into a pattern of reading oh, right, I'm gonna do this so I'm gonna go and do this for instance at night if I'm making her a, a bottle it takes a while for it to cool down to a temperature that she can drink so I'll read a few pages while I'm waiting for it so she's I'm usually pretty good now at preempting when she wants feeding so she's not screaming her head off while I'm getting it ready she's actually just starting to get a bit grumpy so she is waking up now so here she is let's have a look so here is the here's Jennifer she's asleep whoops there we are beautiful little girl when she's not pulling strange faces and breaking wind <laughs> Oh, there's a good girl. So we're going to go now, and I will see you all soon. Obviously, I will be doing a review of the arc that I'm reading once I've read it. Um, more about that in another video. There will be a book haul at some point, but it'll be a cumulative book haul because I'm only buying odd books here and there. I'm not going mad. So, for instance, I've bought the next three Stephen King ones, so I'll be hauling those. And there's a couple of other books I've received that I need to, to show you. So... I will be back soon with some more bookish goodness. Um, I hope you're all okay and I will see you soon. Bye.